What is the good news creating a rally in this market? Is it time to buy in? How am I going to trade these stocks? Hang on. This is not financial nor professional advice. This video is for entertainment only. Hey everybody, the market went up because retail sales went up. But actually, when you adjusted it for inflation, people were buying less things, but they were paying more for the things that they did buy. So you got an increase in the retail sales uh, figure, based, which was based on inflation. If you adjusted it for the inflation that's occurring, it actually was a negative number because people were buying less. They just were paying a, a lot more for what they did buy. So we have a bear market rally, but we're going to have one, it looks like. So we might as well play it. There's actually a talk that the increase in retail sales will probably cement the Federal Reserve's decision to raise the interest rate three quarters of a percent. And there's been talk of even increasing it to one percent, although that's decreased lately. And people are, are settling in on three quarters of a percent increase. And do we have an inflation problem? The consumer price index went up 9.1 percent. And the producer price index, uh, the price that producers pay, which eventually reaches consumers, went up 11.3%. Uh, so we're in heavy inflation right now. But you know, as crazy as it sounds, there's a chance what the Federal Reserve is doing might work, <laughs> okay? The, the United States dollar is getting very strong uh, for the first time... What you hear in the background is thunder. It's raining in Arizona. If it can rain in Arizona, we can have a rally in the spare market, okay? But what I was saying is the dollar has reached parity with the euro, and that's never happened. Whenever I've traveled to Europe in recent years, it's always been you had to pay like a dollar twenty-five to get one euro. And that, that will help inflation because what we buy from other countries, what we buy from China, what we buy from Europe, and a lot of other countries is going to uh, cost us a lot less. But it will cost them more to buy from us. So we're going to sell less, but we're probably going to buy more, or at least at least we'll, pro we'll probably buy less at a reduced price. <laughs> okay. But overall, it's a good thing. And that's one of the effects of raising interest rates is that it makes our bonds attractive uh, and it, it strengthens the dollar and things become cheaper for us to buy from other countries. The banks have been doing poorly, or their, their stocks have, and they report a number of things which are very concerning. Um, Bank of America has reduced its forecast for the S&P 500 uh, they used to say it was going to reach 4,500 by the end of 2022, and now they're saying 3,600, which is below where it is now. Uh, so uh, the banks are, are thinking and, and showing that we're in, in line for a recession. Uh, but I think we are uh, going to have a short-term rally, okay? And part of this effect is it's partly psychological. We've been having so much bad news that we got a, a flicker of some good news, and we're getting flickers in other areas that I'll talk about. But these flickers are creating a rally just because any good news is being magnified much more than it actually should be. But we might as well play the rally, right? And now the plot thickens because we're having major earnings starting to come out for the second quarter. And the first two up the bat are Netflix uh, on, after hours on Tuesday and Tesla the best uh, <laughs> uh, at after hours on Wednesday. And 
between the two of these, I mean, I think Netflix can affect things to the positive or negative, but I think it'll be a moderate effect. The biggie is Tesla because they really shouldn't beat expectations with all the supply problems they've had. And if they somehow beat expectations, uh, I think the market's going to go wild. I think it's also a factor that Apple is has been doing well and is creeping into the, the 150s and, and, and is probably going to get there and might go beyond. And I think... I think you can gauge how the market is doing and, and your expectations uh, according to how Tesla and, and Apple drive the market. I think they rule the market. I think they guard, they, they guide the attitude uh, of, the, of stock investors. And I think it makes my, people much more likely to invest if those two stocks do well. So Netflix reports earnings after hours on Tuesday, July 19th, and it has a low PE. Its PE is like 16, and its earnings growth is a respectable 19%. So here we have a stock that's fallen massively from grace. I wanted to show you the one-year chart to show you how badly it's fallen it was going for $680 around November of 2021. And now its price is about 189. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's still re making respectable money as far as its earnings go. It, it has a low price to earnings. It's worth a look, but I think I'll probably wait on this one. But I have it in mind. The stock that will have the biggest effect on the stock market is easily Tesla. Well, Apple will have a big effect too, but Tesla Tesla and Apple are about equal in their effects. And they usually tend to move somewhat together. Uh, so the two of them combined, it's a major force. Uh, Tesla reports earnings on July 20th after hours. And I think it's going to be massive if it's if it's a positive report because people are expecting a negative report because we know they've had supply problems. It's trailing price to earnings is 92. But this company is so profitable and has such a high earnings rate of 51 percent that is forward price to earnings is 62. OK, so it's anticipated that they keep making all kinds of money, which is all the reason for owning Tesla, that eventually you catch up that price to earnings keeps coming down and you, you get your money's worth eventually. You have to wait a little bit of a while, especially with the economic conditions. But I think Tesla is less likely to be affected than some other stocks, simply because the people buying Teslas are more upper income people who probably aren't as affected uh, by a recession. Uh, so Tesla has that going for them. Looking at the one-year chart on Tesla, uh, we can see that it's been up and down and all around, uh, and it sort of is ending up at about the same place where it was a year ago, uh, this time a year ago. Uh, so it's it tends to be a mover when it moves uh, both ways. Uh, so I think we get positive news when negative news is, is expected. And especially when we're in this bear rally mode, I think it could be explosive. Uh, and I, I've i always said if, if Tesla going over 750 uh, would be one of my conditions for starting to be very bullish on the market, I think this might be fulfilling that, uh, but we shall see. And since I've been talking about Apple so much, we we should take a look at it. It's uh, trailing price to earnings is 97. It's forward price to earnings is around 24. And it has a 20% earnings growth rate, which is respectable, but it's not as dramatic as Tesla. And I think Tesla is kind of where the excitement is in my mind. Uh, but you can't ignore Apple just because it is so much of the market. It's a 2.4 
trillion dollar company, you know, something that big, it, it almost moves the market by itself when it starts to rob. As we look at the chart on Apple, uh, it's sort of the same story as Tesla. It's been up and down and all around, and it's at the same point now that it was a year ago on this date. Uh, so, I mean, the excitement is sort of unwarranted. Uh, we have to see follow through with this rally. And you can get an intense bear rally. And there is some good news. So there's some reasoning behind it. But I think the three quarters of a percentage point is going to be, put a big squash on it. Uh, but it is interesting uh, to compare the two. And when you compare the two, uh, it's kind of the same effect uh, where you, we kind of are at the same point we were a year ago. So what's all the excitement about? <clears throat> the excitement is that we've gotten a little bit of good news and there's possible good news on the horizon. But looking at this one year chart uh, it doesn't give me a lot of excitement to invest. But we have to see some follow through. And I think uh, Monday, uh, the early part of this week and carrying th on through Tesla's earnings is going to tell the story. There's still a lot of negative news. Uh, we can't get away from it, it, it seems. But we are starting to see some positive news. Uh, one negative thing is that uh, Chinese people ha have decided in many cases to stop paying their mortgages. It's, it looks like they're going to have a repeat of our 2008 uh, mortgage uh, loan uh, difficulties, although it's of a different variety because they do everything different there. They, they pay their mortgages, they start paying the mortgages as the house is being built and they're refusing to, to pay their mortgages because the companies are stopping construction and they say they're not going to pay down on the mortgage until they resume building them, which only makes sense, of, of course. But real estate is the big deal in China. And if they're having trouble with their real estate market, uh, that's the main thing with China. But we have a number of positive factors. I noticed today that Bitcoin went over uh, 21,000 and Ethereum is making, uh, is, is rising significantly. And so there's hope coming back to the crypto market. Uh, I noticed that Ukraine is doing better in the war with Russia uh, and is, is starting to have an effect, uh, mainly because of the high Mars and, and the weapons, advanced weapon systems that Europe and the United States have been supplying. Uh, that it's, it's making a real difference. And also, uh, the price of commodities have come down in many cases. The big one is oil, okay? Although I don't think that's going to, just because of the geopolitical situation, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't think that's going to come down a lot. But even coming down somewhat helps, okay? But the commodities that have really fallen are the metals, uh, the all, uh, copper especially, uh, lumber but that's used in construction has come down significantly. So we're left with wondering to ourselves, is what the Fed doing working? And is this uh, 0.75 increase that we're going to have soon, is that going to be the last one or at least the last big one? I think if we get a interest uh, increase less less than or equal to 0.5 in 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 yes in September cuz they don't meet in August in September uh, if we get 0.5 or less that that'll be bullish for the market and then I I think it's a month to month thing after that because I think this market is more affected by inflation than by earnings. Earnings will help, but inflation is going to tell the story. Uh, and so with that, for this brief rally, I think we're going to have a short-term rally. Uh, who knows? It could carry on more than that. But I, I'm, I'm playing this day-to-day -day simply because it, it's so short-term of an outlook with this market being as unstable as it is. I don't normally short. I only short during crashes. 
like this one, which is a big one, I think. And I'm going to use SQQQ, which is shorting the 100 largest companies on the NASDAQ. But for right now, for this rally, I'm actually using the TQQQ, and that's uh, tripling uh, the, the gains on the QQQ, which is the 100 largest companies on the NASDAQ. So I'm being bullish in the short term. I'm having some faith in this bear market rally, but I think it's going to, to come down eventually. There's still too much bad news, although we're starting to get that good news creep in. But I think it's going to be until uh, September uh, that uh, how they do interest rates uh, in September tells the story. If it's above 0.5, in September, we're still in in, in heavy, uh, bad situation uh, that I will continue to short on. But I'm doing it on a day-to-day -day basis because I think this is a headline-driven news, and the headlines is mainly inflation, and I, that's the way I'm going to play it. And I'm going to play it this way until the crash ends, and then I'm turning into a longer-term bull. And I'll do some swing trading, but I prefer to do, you know, I, trading where I can look forward a year or two or maybe three or maybe even five if we got a good enough situation. But that's how I roll. <laughs> this is the way I'm playing it. Thanks for listening and watching. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and, and uh, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified of future videos. And good luck to us all. We're going to need it. Thank you.